<laughs> yes, uh, I can't wait to see you. I hope we will see each other next week. Lorraine, you should be able to share now. Thank you. Thank you. We're probably at a point where we're going to be able to cut down at least some of our Zooms, right? That's the plan. Lorraine, what's going on in your office? Are people back in physically? We just started on Monday. Reduced capacity? Yeah, we had one person, two people in on Monday, three people in on Tuesday. It's just nice to have people back in the office and see people again. I think so, yeah. See people live rather than on a screen, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna run over and just, just one second. Get my... All right, well, maybe while we're waiting for Lorraine, we can just welcome everybody. Jeff, welcome again. Marianne, thanks for joining us. Oh, Harry, Harry's coming. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to mute Dave, eh? <laughs> um, Hello. Yeah. Uh, David, can you mute yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so I'm not going to see everybody here. Um, should we, in the interest of time, and to be fair to everybody that's on time, get going? Whatever you like. Yeah, I think that's All a right. great idea, and people can tune in. Yeah, they'll, they'll tune in, and I'm sure on the recording they'll uh, they'll see what what they missed. So, Lorraine, thank you so much for for joining us. We really appreciate your time. For those of you who don't know Lorraine, she runs the number one. Now, it's not a team in KW; it's called group, right? Correct. Yes, you are the number one group. Tell us what what your volume was last year. I know it was a lot. Three hundred ninety-seven transactions. Um, and our average, our average commissions $10,000 now. So that's exciting because it was much lower than that for years. Um, yeah, I'm still in production. Last year was the lowest, um, cause I was supposed to slow down and do a little bit more coaching and training and leading the team. So last year, I think I personally did about 77, 78 transactions, but I average a hundred every year. And how's the beginning part of this year been for you guys? Oh, January and February were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> March kind of had a few bumps in it. Um, you know, a lot of people were asking, you know, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Are you doing virtual open houses? Are you doing Zoom presentations? Are you, you know, virtually showing homes? And, um, you know, a lot of that stuff, wasn't necessarily new. I've been in real estate since I was 18. So, you know, we've had clients along the years that have had cancer or, you know, compromised immune systems. So we've gone in with masks and gloves and, you know, had to be really careful with some showings. And as far as virtual showings go, I mean, you know, we were doing those with people. We've had people from Switzerland and Italy and England buy properties up here or even the city people buying cottages. So, you know, doing virtual showings is not something or our listing presentation by Zoom. None of that was new. Um, I think it was new for a few people on our team and just kind of get the habit of it. Um, but it didn't take us long in March. We were 
we were out pretty quickly, um, kind of doing everything we can be to be continuing with business and selling our clients homes that needed to sell. Well, cool. um, well, why don't we go ahead and let you do your presentation. If you guys have questions, maybe you can pop them into the chat window. Um, you can try and unmute yourself. I don't know if you have an opportunity to ask. Uh, we'll certainly have an opportunity at, at the end, right, Lorraine, for, for Q&A? Yeah. How many people do we have on right now, roughly? Um, I think we're at about 20. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over this. Um, I believe that... Um, I'll go through the presentation and then I'll stick around. I'm happy to add, answer any questions. It may take a little bit of a different turn than what some of you were anticipating when you read new techniques for new times. Um, and I'm just going to explain that. And yeah, at the end, I'm happy to answer absolutely any question. I'm an open book. So everyone's good with that. Thank you. Okay. So basically virtual open house zoom presentations for buyers and sellers. I mean, it's no different. Um, than doing it face to face. We've been doing it by Zoom or whatever kind of program, if it's Skype, if it's FaceTime, if it's whatever the client needs. We've been doing virtual showings, you know, we're talking about masks, hand sanitizer, gloves, and the client compassion calls. So basically, when it comes to the client compassion calls, um, what I want you to understand is, to me, that was the biggest and best thing that we could have done. Um, right off the bat was calling everybody in our sphere and having conversations and just just asking them what we can do to help. So I've been doing this for almost 32 years. And when I get asked, you know, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? Or if you could tell, you know, give advice to 20 year old self, what would you do? And what would you tell yourself? And when it boils all down to it, I got back into sales actively in the month of May and I, I just kind of rolled up my sleeves and kind of went full in. And the first thing I did was started reaching out to my sphere again. So I'm going to save you a whole bunch of time and I'm going to save you a whole bunch of money and tell you that that's basically where you need to go. Um, the value of each person you interact with, you know, I've dealt with people over the years that there's a company that if I say, oh, I'd like that sweater, we're thinking about getting some Team Jordan sweaters, they'll send me a free sample. And I remember thinking at one time, this is crazy, like these guys send me something every month, they're constantly in touch with me. Um, I just, it's kind of weird, but I feel obligated to deal with them because, I mean, they do provide a great service, but I'm also a local girl and like to do business with the people locally, but they're just so consistent with their follow-up. They're so consistent with the value add, you know, anything. If I say, oh, I'm thinking about maybe getting pens printed, they'll send me samples of 10 or 15 different pens. So I think that in real estate, you know, sure, we might do a gift, we might make a call, we might have an event and, you know, I've done everything. We've given away pumpkins, we've given away Christmas trees, we've given away, you know, uh, shrubs for Earth Day, we've done movie events, we've done carnivals. Like we have been the queen, I've been the queen of community events and community interaction. But in the end, it's the one-on-one -on -one conversations that I have with people. And when you look at the value of each person you interact with, I mean, you know, it starts with them putting an offer on a place and buying something. Often they have a place to sell. If you're training them properly, you can be training them to invest in property. Um, they might refer friends, colleagues, neighbors, relatives to you. They might have a child that buys. Hopefully they have two children that will buy from you over years. Um, the parents, you know, if they're separated, you might get two deals out of that. Um, buy or sell a cottage, refer them up here. We're happy to take them and pay you a referral on it. So maybe they have one up here that the family owned for years and they're gonna sell it and then they're gonna buy one on their own that they're not sharing with siblings. Sometimes they buy a commercial property, a business. They advocate for you. I don't know how many times, you know, somebody will say, hey, I'm thinking of selling my house. And one of my, my clients will go on and say, oh my gosh, you have to use Lorraine Jordan, she's awesome. And you know what, they just call and they're ready to list because that person's put out a, you know, they referred you. Um, 
I even get excited when somebody gets into real estate, maybe a friend or a family member, and they join us here at KW, and now you're getting profit share from it. What about they buy or sell a vacation home? You know, they buy something in Florida or California or, you know, maybe a little bit less of that now, but they might be selling them, <laughs> right? Um, In-laws, again, that could be two different people or two different groups that you're dealing with. I've had people refer a business partner. So I had a client that, um, and I always tell this, this story and I think it's kind of funny. Um, I had to use, I was giving a hard time to, I guess, scripts one day with my coach. And um, I said, I just struggle with some of the scripts. It's just some of them. I believe in scripts, but some of them are a little, and she goes, okay, I dare you to use the bold script, the one that you're in a contest and you know, you need leads. And she goes, I dare, dare you to use that script word for word. You can't change a single word. And I said, okay. And she said, you have to use it for two hours and you have to get three appointments. I said, okay, I'll, I'm game. I'll use the script word for word. And it's not about two hours. It's about once I get the three appointments, I'm good to go. So she said, okay. So the first thing I did was call the people that I was most comfortable with. And I remember calling and doing the, hi, is this Tara? And she's like, yeah, because she recognized my phone, right? Called display. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Tara, this is Lorraine Jordan calling from Team Jordan at Keller Williams Realty. How are you today? And she goes, I am fine. How are you? <laughs> and I went through the script, right? Word for word. And I said it just like that. And she said, oh, you should meet my friend Mandy. And I actually did an eye roll at that moment because she had already mentioned Mandy probably four months earlier as this, this person I should meet one day because Mandy was going to buy up half a Midland. And I remember thinking, yeah, whatever, you know, she had big dreams or, you know, that's great that she's so gung ho, but I needed an appointment. So I booked her appointment to meet Mandy and Tara and we went for lunch. Mandy bought 21 investment properties from me that year alone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and she's referred, we've done a pile of business. So once you understand that the value of each person you interact with, like this is simple. Like I just went over it so that you would see how you know how easy it is. I've had I've had grandchildren now. After being in real estate for 32 years, I've had grandchildren that are starting to buy now. Wow. So every client is has over 15 opportunities. Yet we spend all kinds of time and money looking for new business when we already have people that know us, like us, and trust us. And I learned that through the compassion calls. I had people posting online saying, holy cow, I bought a house seven years ago from Team Jordan and I'm in an apartment. We're never buying. They know that. And yet they still called and checked in on us during this time. Like talk about customer service. You know, we all got into real estate. We often say, oh, it's because we care about people and we'll care about them. Look it. It's, it's, it's double dipping. It's caring about them and it's a successful business at the same time. So hopefully I'll go through, I believe in sphere. I'm going to explain a couple things that I do and hopefully it makes sense. Um, hopefully you all know what a sphere is. Like I said, it's friends, family, those whom you do business with, um, fellow organization members, club members, all that sort of thing. So how to build your sphere. I often, I, I have a big deal where people are supposed to bring 200 people um, in their sphere. 200 is sometimes a really big number for some, but we get them going and we go like, go through your social media. Like, remember, they don't all have to be local people. They're supposed to be people that you interact with that know you. I mean, you can refer business all over the world. That's one of the best things about being with our company and the size of it. We have a hundred people, you know, questionnaire that you go through and it's like, who's your hairdresser? Who's your dentist? Like, just try to get you to think of, think out of the box a little bit more. So Lorraine, can I just uh, throw in a question here? Are you talking about these are questions for your team members when they join you? Yeah. So agents, like, just, just think about it. Like what, you know, people often say, oh, I don't know that many people. 
when you sit down and you start going through your social media and like I said, this list of questions, you start going, wow, I I'd never even thought of them. Right? Business to business, people that you do business with interact. You can build your sphere out of ge geographic farming, door knocking, obviously not so much right now, but you can still cold call, volunteering and joining organizations. So it just depends. You can build your sphere up. And then I talk about meeting people where you are, like, who are you and what do you love to do? Like I've had people that are, you know, they're, they love golf. They absolutely love golf. Well, get branded apparel, put your name on it. So people feel like they know you because they can read your name on your shirt and get out there and interact with people. I have four kids. I sold almost every single school teacher. I think there's one that I didn't have because their relative was in real estate. Um, probably 25, 26 transactions just from school teachers. The principals, three principals I sold homes to. Um, and then I'd go to you know hockey, I'd go to swimming lessons, I'd go to figure skating, whatever it was, I always, always wore branded clothes and to me, when you when I wore branded clothes, it said I'm open, like I'm t open for talking about business. It's not just I'm here watching my kid at the hockey game. I'm also open to talk about real estate. I mean, you know, when the game's going on, people aren't always talking to you, but afterwards or before, after. And like I said, having your name on the front, it's weird, but then people, because sometimes people like they recognize you or they know you, but it just, it just opened it up. Um, Thanking people for great service and giving them a business card. Anytime I have an appointment, like if I'm going from one appointment to another and I have a flat spot because I finished the first appointment earlier or something, I'll go into Home Depot, I walk around, I see people in the ceramic tile aisle, you know, and I'll, I'll start talking to them about like, you know, isn't it funny? I always fix, you know, I'm always fixing stuff up before I sell it. <laughs> and I have a conversation with them. Um, if I get service from somebody and somebody helps me with something, they carry it out to my car or, you know, they help direct me in a store of where I can find something. I always go, oh my gosh, I just really appreciate the service you gave me. And I, I just like, if you ever need anything, like if you're ever looking to buy or sell real estate, maybe even invest, here's my business card. I would love to return the, for, the favor and, you know, return that, repay you for the great service and provide you with the same kind of service at my end. You wouldn't, you'd be shocked how many times I get phone calls from that. It could be somebody on the phone and I'll even say that kind of line. So just interacting with people, right? Um, if I know them, I recognize them or they're a business that I do know. It's like, I get their name, their address. I send them a little thank you note. I appreciate your business, send them a card and I add them to the CRM. Um, and then I go and find them on social media and connect. The personal note I mentioned and just, the next thing is staying in touch with them. Just because you met them and you put them in the CRM, you still have to talk to them. So the best way to connect with your sphere is a, it's communication. It has to be two-way communication. A voicemail, an email, a text, a Facebook or Instagram message or a wave as you pass by somebody is not a connection. Um, if you don't get a reply, it's not a connection. It's not two-way. That just means that you send something to them and it's, it's an opportunity. It, it's definitely a good idea. I mean, that to me is part of the 33 touch program, but you need to get them to reply. You need to have an interaction with them. So ask questions. If you ask questions, it requires an answer. They can control and, you know, it helps you to control and direct a conversation through the question and they engage the other person to make them reflect and think and, um, you know, often I'll be like, oh yeah, no, we're not thinking about selling right now. I said, oh, I didn't think you were, but I was wondering if you were interested in investing, you know, kids and university and stuff, you know, kind of gets expensive. And I just didn't know if that was something that was on your radar and it causes them to reflect. So scale of connection, again, it's good to at least do text, voicemail, email, mail, social media, direct mail. Voice to voice is a great, you know, so once you got them replying, if you're voice to voice, you're on the phone, you're on a Zoom call, whatever works great, and then face to face. So in person was always great. 
Um, I'm finding some people out there are starting to want to come out more and, and meet and, you know, we're just using precautions. And if somebody invites me over to their house right now, a lot of them seem to be pretty happy to just see somebody again. Um, so it's just a different connection. So that'll also make me think when you're doing um, a buyer, like we've had a lot of people that have reached out looking like interested in property, especially in the beginning. And you may still be a little bit more, have more cautious people because of your, the density of Toronto versus smaller town. Um, but I found that people would call about a property and the agents were so focused on virtually showing them that listing that they weren't thinking of like the buyer presentation, you know, just because they contacted, they were, a lot of buyers were contacting, you know, four or five different agents about properties instead of understanding that they could just work with one agent on all of those properties. And I think some agents got kind of confused with, you know, how am I going to go virtually show the other properties? Um, but what I used to do even is I would watch the virtual tour of the other agent with my client on a Zoom call. And we would pause it and we would discuss things like, oh, wow, did you see that kitchen? Like, I've been in this style of home before, or, you know, what do you think of this kitchen? You know, is it, is it modern enough? And I would ask questions. So that's, again, similar to just being face-to-face -face, cause you are face-to-face -face on Zoom. So here's the numbers, and this is where it gets real. When it comes to, I find that a lot of us will treat our business, I mean, to me, biz, real estate is about people and relationships. But when it comes to business, business is just math. It's just numbers. And they happen to have dollar signs in front of them if you look at it eventually. But, you know, it, it's about figuring out what the numbers off are and what does that look like and what can you accomplish. So if you work 46 working weeks in a year, so if you take six weeks off, now some of you are like, oh, wow, six weeks off, that would be a dream. However, if you really start paying attention to the time that you do actually take off. A lot of people, I mean, I don't know what it is. I think Christmas, because it starts advertising and being promoted right after Thanksgiving, I find December is getting to be, um, I don't know, a more social month, a more celebrated month, a month where more people are taking time off than ever. It used to be there was kind of a lockdown for some people for two weeks. Now I find some people are up to four weeks. It just seems that they're not engaged during that time. Um, so there's different holidays throughout the year that people take off. So I just use that as December as an example. Um, holidays, you're traveling. Maybe you're not traveling out of the country, but you're coming up to my area because it's really pretty. Um, March break, long weekends, you know, you're sick, you have a sick child, or you're just taking days off. So let's use the number that you just took six weeks off and that's completely possible. Okay, so you're working 46 working weeks. If you work 46 working weeks in a year and you work a four day work week, so let's say you take Fridays off or Mondays, whatever day you prefer, maybe Monday's a busy day for you after the weekend. That's 184 working days. And if you work two hours a day making calls to your sphere and connecting with them, that's 368 working hours. So if you do 368 working hours and a typical work week is 40 hours, that means you're committing 9.2 weeks to connecting with your sphere and building that rapport and lead, gen lead generating through it. Does that make sense to everybody? Sure. So if you have 100 people in your sphere and you do, you're calling those four, the four days, so you're making, you're calling them four, sorry, four times a year. So you're calling your sphere quarterly. So four calls a year, your 400 calls. If you divide that 400 calls by the 184 days that you're actually putting into lead gen and working, you only have to make 2.17 contacts a day. So if you had 200 people in your sphere and you had four calls a year, you're making 800 calls. And during those days, you have to make 4.35 contacts. And if you have 400 people in your sphere four times, that's 1,600 calls, which sounds like a massive number. 
but look at it, it's 8.7 contacts. And the more you get to know these people, the more you can contact them in different ways. Like you can text somebody and have them reply and that's, that counts if you're having a conversation with them. Everybody likes to be reached in different ways. So we're gonna look at the right side. So every 50 people you have not met generates a sale. So if you have 100 people that you're talking to that you haven't met, you're gonna get two ends out of it. It's the, that's the intention. 200 people's four ends, 300 people's six ends, 400 people eight ends. See the trend? You're working really hard for people that you're just meeting or you haven't met yet and you're out door knocking, you're cold calling. Whereas on the other side, for every 12 people in your sphere that you've met, you can work on the intention and the goal is to get one sale and one referral for every 12 people. So if you have 100 people in your sphere, you can get 16.6 ends. 200 is 33, 300 is 50, 466, 583. So now I know some of those numbers get really big fast, but those are legit numbers. Like I just picked up the phone and started calling people in May and I did 10 deals in the month of May personally from making calls to my sphere. And they're just coming from contribution and, and, and it's like, hey, haven't talked to you in a while. Like, man, things are crazy. How are you doing? They already know I'm in real estate. They're, they're gonna bring up real estate. I don't even have to say anything about real estate. Well, and right now, everybody wants to know how, as a realtor, you're doing, because, of course, they hear how bad things are out there. Right. Uh, I'm sure you've heard lots of, oh, really? Really? Like, you're actually, how can you still sell houses? That, that's my, my favorite question. Well, we can. And it's all, like, they're really happy to hear that something is actually going on out there, and it's not, not all doom and gloom like the media tends to report. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those are, those are legit numbers. And everyone wants to help you. Lorraine, sorry, just before, uh, because that was a really nice uh, chart, I think for, for, yeah, for some people that maybe either didn't, uh, weren't able to get that down, maybe yep. we can grab a couple of screenshots from you or a couple of the slides. Absolutely. Perfect. And I, I know I get people that go, that's crazy. But seriously, I've, I have, I had a brand new agent that I trained and in their first full year in real estate. Now that was 2017. They did 84 transactions. Wow. I've had people do, um, the one guy was one full year in real estate. He did 61. I uh, had another guy, one full year. He started last March and he finished the year with 56. Um, I had one agent three years in, 81 transactions. I've had people take, I had one agent, one client, or sorry, one agent that she would go south for the winter for three months. So she was gone, December, January, February, and she still averaged 50 deals a year. And it's, it's like sphere is massive. Massive. Thank you. And then, yeah, just train them, train them to help you. Like if somebody says, Hey, Hey, Irene, can you help me with something? Of course your natural reaction is sure. If I can, of course I will. Right. So just ask them and train them, train them to refer you. Right. Everyone wants to help teach them to refer you. Um, and then it turns into this, right? It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that makes the difference. So it's really, really, real estate is like, um, real estate can be a demon, right? We can, we can get lost in the fact that we're our own boss, we're, we're not accountable, we can work whenever we want. I mean, a lot of people get into real estate for that freedom of the schedule. When I talk to people about real estate, I say, you know the, what real estate really is? It's the opportunity to put in more than 40 hours a week and to get paid really well for it. You can work all the overtime you want and you get paid really well for it. Now, that's for somebody that wants to join, you know, join us and basically are, you know, comparing themselves to other people on the team that are making, you know, $200,000 a year. Well, they're working more than 40 hours a week, guaranteed. 
but if you were focused on if you if you're, I'm going to, I'm going to just share one more screen and I'm going to go back to what I want you to be focused on. So helping people in real estate to me, you know, I, I get accused of being a workaholic. I get, you know, comments like that. But for me, it's, it boils down to this working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. I love that. I'm passionate about what I do. Right? That's great. So when it comes to putting in the hours, um, I believe that one of the things, one of the mistakes that I made, and I believe a lot of people make, is we get so, we get excited, we build a team, we get busy, we need help, we want people there. But if we were to focus, if I look back, because at some point what happened is I started hiring people to call my sphere, like I got busy, I I wasn't being as consistent with it and I hired ISAs, I hired admin support to start calling my sphere. And then I started to lose touch with some of them because I just got busy. That's how it goes. But I should have always stayed calling them. The team growth isn't about just bringing a bunch of people in to help you. If I was calling them four times a year, it would be like, hey, it would be like, hey, look at I developed this. Look at this little baby chick, right? I'm going to give it to the right person that's going to take care of this person because they mean so much to me because I worked hard to build this relationship and to get these referrals or these clients. So when I take that person, I'm going to give it to the right person that's going to work with them. Eventually you could have a business where all you're doing is calling your sphere and you're not even going to show properties anymore. If you wanted to get to that stage, like I look at how many people now are at a stage where, you know, they're talking about retiring or what's their succession plan. And I think, God, they could travel anywhere in the world and commit to two hours a day and, and make really good money at it. So like I have somebody that retired and in their first year of being retired, we paid them referrals on it because we worked our business together and they made like $120,000 in their first year being retired, traveling around the world. Wow. That's amazing. But you can always keep your business if you're keeping those relationships going. Right? Call, call the sphere. If you could learn to master calling your sphere every day for, for four days a week for two hours, you have an opportunity to, you know, plan your future, plan your, you're in control. You're in control of those relationships. Yeah, there's, I see them just going through the group chat. Yeah, Kate Peterson says that everybody talks about it. We tend to forget it. Well, we're always looking for the new big thing. And, you know, I'm just thinking as you're, as you're talking here, this session is called New Techniques for New Times. And really, there's nothing new. In fact, you want to do less and really focus on the things that matter. So it's really those relationships rather than finding something new that you can do in this new environment. It's really just going back. It's beyond going back to basics. It's just going back to the thing that matters most. Exactly. I love the way you just said it. Cause that's exactly it. It's not, it's not necessarily going back to basics. It's, it's always been about people and relationships always will be. doesn't matter how much, I mean, technology is fantastic, but technology is just a tool. Right. It's just to help to make your day more efficient. It's about people and, and more than ever, people want to know you care. You, you've, how many people go on about, oh, I get in real estate because I love people. Well, show them you love them. Call them. They're at home freaking out. Right? They've been scared since March. And then now they're hearing, oh, the prices are going to go down 18%. I'd be pretty worried about that. What if I had to sell right now? What if, what if I had to sell and I don't know if I can or not? I mean, yeah, you can. So, you know, I, I just like everybody, when, when this all happened in March, the first thing I did was go look at my expenses and I started cutting expenses. That's what they told us to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, we cut them from, it was almost 40%. Like we wow. hit really, really hard, but you know what? We didn't cut a lot of people. 
We cut a lot of the extra stuff that we were spending money on to generate business. And in the end, it's just, we just started calling our clients. And I mean, yeah. I've been preaching this for years, but it's like, this was just, I mean, it was a gift. You know, people say, oh, what do I call them about? Holy cow, they were home. They're still home, a lot of them. Yeah, it's true. They're so happy just to hear a positive voice. I went to see a lady the other day and she's like, yeah, she goes, I'm not sure it might, you know, I might, I just wanted to know the numbers now so that I could understand. And, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I should do a new kitchen or not, but realistically, I'd like to move in two years. And I said, okay. So I talked to her about her kitchen and gave her a couple of people that she could call for the quit for quotes. And then I said, oh, I said, you know, I'm, I said, I, I'm happy that you're going to stay because, you know, and you're not moving back to the East Coast right away. But honestly, I was really excited that you wanted to sell because I have buyers that want to move on this in this neighborhood. And she goes, oh, and I said, yeah. So if you know anybody, let me know. And she goes, well, actually, Mary down the street was talking about selling. And then I went and listed her house. <laughs> right. It's just asking for the business. And I'm always thinking I'm just building relationships. Right. And sooner or later, they, they all work out. I found the last few months uh, really, really, um, I don't want to say enlightening. I, I've always stayed in touch with my past clients, but I have a huge sphere that's been very much untouched. So there's those few people that you're in touch with all the time. And then there's the big group that like, there's people, I found somebody today that I hadn't called in four years. Mm -hmm because they weren't moving. So it's like when you keep putting them off and putting them off, and putting them off. And what I found in these last few months is because I'm actually doing a care call, there hasn't been a, any of that, oh, should I call or should I not call? Because I, you know, when I pick up the phone, hi, it's Irene. I know I've done a really bad job of staying in touch with you, but I knew you weren't moving and we hadn't talked in such a long time and I'm actually not calling on real estate. I'm calling just to see how you are and how you've been holding up. And it's been, it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I talked about too is, you know, I've seen a lot of people, I've had a lot of people on the team and it's like, they're not calling some people because quite frankly, they don't like them. Right. We all have people in our sphere that eh, they're not our favorite people. Right. Yeah. Like what, if, what if, you know, what if everybody in your sphere, what if you even had 100 people that are people that you love spending time with that you enjoy they're friends. I mean, how many times have you sold a house to someone and you've become friends with them? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like what, what about the possibility that you have 100 people that you just, you just spend all you're devoted to and it's, and it's not work. It's passion because it's people that like, like I said, the golfing or, you know, like, um, I don't know, investing or someone that you travel with or, you know, girls weekends or, poker guy the guys from poker like whatever it is like what if they were just the people that you you care about that you want to spend time with that you have fun with like what would your life be like if everybody that you dealt with was somebody that you would consider a friend that you actually look forward to speaking to like what would that be like no 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 dođi ja ne pričam ništa ona priča I čarape ću da mu dam te. Opet me, nemoj da stavi mi tu. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. That's okay, no problem. Thanks, Gran. The beauty of Zoom. So yeah, what would it be like if you had that opportunity and every day you're working with people that you care about? Now what I find, one of the biggest challenges that I've come up with with a lot of people is I don't know, you kind of got comfortable at home. Maybe you're not going out as much. Maybe you're actually enjoying being home a little more. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know, when I used to take, I used to go away for a month in the summer, I'd take December off and I'd go on a trip with my family. And I was gone, when I'd take a long trip, which was like three, four weeks, and I did that every summer and I did it for December for years. Um, what I found was, there was fear in going back to work and I called it the snowball, right? The big snowball at the top of the hill that starts coming down the hill and it takes everything in its way. And I'd be like, Oh, I don't know if I want to go back to the crazy work schedule that I had before. Right. I, I had fear of it. I was pulled away from it. And I had just spent all this time, you know, kind of relaxing and with family and 
I was like, oh, I kind of keep want to spend, I, I want to keep spending time with my family. I don't know if I want to go back to that. And the first thing I did when I got back in order to be able to get back in routine was I booked my next vacation, my next family time. And as soon as I booked that, it was like, okay, now I know what I'm, what my goal is. I know what I'm doing. Here's, I got to commit for three months and I just, you know, I need to go to work. And then the need to go to work turned into, oh my God, I'm meeting so many great people and I'm helping people find their dream property and I'm, I'm solving problems and, and, and it's not work anymore, right? It's what I enjoy, but getting back into it, because yeah, sometimes you do get busy and sometimes it does consume you. So the most important thing is to, like right now, I have no holidays book because I don't know when I'm going to fly again. And that's a little troublesome for me. Yeah, um, we've been talking about that. It's, you don't have that anticipation. Yeah. yeah. And there's no like that, okay, well, I'm going to do, you know, it's like, it's like going, it's like going for a, a, a swim and, you know, you're going to go out for a swim and it's like, oh, I don't know when I'm going to stop and turn around. I'm just going to keep swimming. Well, yeah, that might get a little tiring after a while. You have to have that stop point, right? That focus. Um, so yeah, I sat down the other day, I have a big schedule for the year and I go in and I start going, okay, well, maybe I'm not traveling, but what could I do that's fun that's in Ontario? right? What can I go do to just get a break? Or who can I hang out with that, you know, I'm still able to see, or you just need to still make plans. And then it's like, then you can, how do I make it a win? Right? I started laughing when I went back and I thought, God, it took me three years to not be so focused on selling anymore. And now I'm in this point where I'm, I'm going to go back into everyday sales. And honestly, I had a real struggle with it because it took me three years to get to the point where I could see what I was going to do with my time instead of helping people and, and delivering over here. It was a different kind of, it was pivoting, right? And I thought, oh, I got to go back into sales. And then I kept thinking, how do I make it a win? How do I make it a win? What's, what's the win for me? And in the end, it ended up being like, okay, well, what if I get involved in investment properties? And if I'm going to do 50 deals, um, what if I'm doing 50 deals because I'm getting listings and I'm selling them to myself in an investor group or something, and now I partially own those properties? Wouldn't that make this great? And I thought, yeah, that definitely makes it great. So I started working on that, and then I just started helping people, and I'm happy, and I love the people that I'm working with. You got passion again. Yeah. So Lorraine, uh, we had a few questions about your market area, and you're up in Midland. You have a team in Barrie as well, right? Yeah. And then what are some of the other surrounding areas that you work? Because there's quite a few of them. Collingwood, Wasaga Beach, uh, Aurelia, uh, we'll do Gravenhurst. So just that area. And it's not like I have different people. Like I have people that live in Wasaga Beach in Collingwood. So it's not just me saying, oh, we cover all these areas. There's actually people that are very experienced and know the neighborhoods. and Because um, that's one of the biggest things that people do. They don't always understand, you know, when we get people that come up from the city to sell a cottage, it's, they have no idea what they're, what they're getting into. There could be some pretty serious, um, you know, there could be a problem in that neighborhood with the water, the drinking water, and then people don't know that, right? So having hyper local makes a difference. Where, where were the folks that we just sent up to you? Was it Horseshoe Valley? Mm -hmm. Yeah, between Midland and Barrie. That was our last referral just from, uh, I guess, a month ago, right, Lorraine? Yep. And Karen was really, really familiar with that area, so that was great. Yeah, because, I mean, up there, too, you have such such different markets. You want to make sure that you get somebody that knows, like you said, you know, about the water and about, you know, the plans and all these things that somebody from out of the area wouldn't know. Yeah, we had one once, and it was, it was interesting because there was a waterfront that was for sale for about four years. And... Um, the property was, you know, it was one of those things, all of a sudden the property sold. And I was like, I was talking to the local agent about it. And I said, holy cow, like that property sold. And they're like, yeah, do you believe it? I said, what'd you get for it? And she said, like it sold for, I think it was 1.2 million. And I said, holy cow. She goes, yeah. She goes crazy. She goes, my original price to them was like 899. And I said, who sold it? And she said some, she goes, oh, whatever. It's some guy from Toronto. She goes, actually, she, it was bad because it was a KW agent. And she goes, it was KW agent. And I was like, oh, because she said, oh, it's one of yours. And I said, oh, I said, that's interesting. 
Um, anyway, I didn't want to like the deal closed like the next week. And then I reached out to the agent and I said, why didn't you call me? And the agent said, well, it was a really close family member. And I said, yeah, but why didn't you call me? Like, even, even if you weren't referring, I would have been happy to give you some advice. Like if you called me now and said they don't want to live there anymore and they want to sell, I'd be listing it at eight ninety nine, and you just sold it for 1.2. Some family member you are <laughs> kind of joked with the guy a little bit, but for real, like if you have somebody and you know, you believe that they're really attached to you or something, at least reach out if you're in anywhere, like any of my territories. I mean, we're all in this together and we're here to do a great job and take care of people. And Lorena is really, really well connected up there. So anybody I have that's just going North, I call Lorraine first. <laughs> yeah. If I don't cover it, I'll find you somebody that does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. You need somebody that, uh, that you trust and that your, your clients can trust because the person you're referring them to is a reflection on you. And if you put them in the hands of somebody that doesn't do a great job for them, that could affect you in the future and your relationship with them. Well, then remember every client's worth 15 transactions. All right. Yeah. That's it. Right. Do you have any other questions there? I see. Oops. Chat. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I wrote down a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I would love to hear any questions or, or either questions or, you know, as we call them in KW speak, ahas, some uh, little bit of in, enlightenment that you didn't know before that really struck you. I always love those. Why oh, everybody's so quiet. I think it's hard to get, that's why I shared the tip about the getting back to work. I think, um, I find a lot of people, I heard a stat the other day. I don't know if it's true. The stat kind of frightened me. Um, somebody said that the stat they heard was since COVID, only 18% of the agents in Ontario have transacted. Wow. I wonder. It's going to be a scary work. number. <laughs> that is a very scary number. In, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd want to look that up to verify it. I don't think I'd want to know. No. So I think that there's, yeah, it's just hard to get back into it, but I don't know. It's, um, go help some people. They want to hear from you. Claudia just put something interesting in the chat. Many people who usually travel and go abroad are now looking to, uh, into finding a place up north because it's local, right? I've heard prices are going up. I imagine, Claudia, you mean prices are going up up there. Is that is that a trend that you're seeing, Lorraine? Oh, massive. When it first hit, um, I could not believe how many people wanted to buy acreage, a farm. I mean, they were gonna come up here and live off the land. Um, it was kinda, okay. Uh, yeah, all of, uh, we, I was calling everybody I knew with acreage saying, sell now. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're crazy. They're coming in droves. We sold, we sold 20 acres. The people paid 150 for it the year before and we sold it for 240. Like wow. it was just crazy. Um, and waterfronts. Um, but there's also because the people are using their waterfronts this year. I mean, we've had a beautiful spring weather wise. It's been nice and you know, it's been warmer in June than what it usually is in July or August. So We've had a lot of people not selling their cottages because they're using them this year um, because they have time on their hand or because they want to get out of the city. I mean, the comment we get is um, they're getting away from the high density. Right. Up yeah. here, right. Um, and now it's just, yeah, the vacations. They want to come up and enjoy waterfront. So prices have been really high on waterfront because there's nothing for sale. I probably have 20 water from buyers right now. We're out knock, not knocking on doors, but we're doing a lot of off market um, stuff to try to get people on board. Lorraine, Susan's asking, what is the summer cottage rental market like right now? Good luck. Um, everybody I know is completely about two weeks. Was it two weeks ago that they announced that we were open again for rentals um, and it went through the roof. Everybody I know that has rentals is book solid. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because two weeks ago, a lot of them were concerned about it. Interesting. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, and I partnered up with a friend and we have um, um, a business called, uh, it's Go Fog It Central Ontario. And they go in and they like fog for, it, it kills viruses and stuff. And we thought it would be really popular with people that had cottage rentals. Um, so if they're Airbnb and people are coming and going in a week, it was the quickest way to um, secure the space and make it COVID free. So just thinking out of the box all the time. Cool. Okay. Anything else you guys want to know? I'm open book. You know what, actually, I do have a question for you um, around your team, Lorraine. So, so actually, you know what, that's one of the things that we didn't cover um, at the beginning. Can you just give us an idea of the size of your team and the number of admins and agents? So we're probably that right now we would be, um, we have 13, 13 agents, I believe, 13 or 14 agents, and we're about 15 admin. We have people that answer the phone like from nine to, it used to be nine to nine, right now we're running nine to seven, seven days a week. Um, we have everything from handyman to, we have uh, pretty much everything covered that I can think of. So what have you done over the last three months to keep your agents motivated and productive? Oh, we've tried everything. Um, <laughs> So that brings me back. So we did, we started zoom calls right away, nine o'clock in the morning that I was on and, and it's just explaining everything they need to do. Like we had virtual showings, like on the 16th of March, our office admin were already out of the office and we were already doing virtual showings, virtual listing presentations. We paired people up so that they could practice together. Um, but in the end, I go back to about two, I guess it was two years ago, I hired two agents in the same week, okay? Two incredible guys, and I was going, holy cow, like a jackpot, brand new agents in the industry. And I thought, you know, this, this is perfect. Six months in, the one guy sold one house and he was out of the business. And the other guy ended up being my, like he was becoming my top agent. Right now he's the top agent on my team. And I was thinking like, you know, how, how did this happen? You know, they both started at the same time. So there was no, like, sometimes I would go, okay, well maybe, maybe I didn't train this guy right. Maybe I didn't launch right. Maybe it was the time of year, but these were two guys, same time of year. What was the difference? Exact same training. And in the end, it ended up being mindset. So I did a huge amount of research on that. Uh, Gary Keller's mastermind group, we brainstormed, you know, how to spot and identify talent. And the difference was um, the abundance versus scarcity. All right. Yeah. Right. So the one guy got it. He thought he would try real estate and the other guy, he was never here to try it. He was here to crush it. And he just, he always had an abundance mindset and he was always looking for what was next. And, and it's huge. And that's exactly the difference between the agents right now that are, that are succeeding in, you know, even, um, I wouldn't even say succeeding. They're doing more than that. They're, they're crushing it out there, but they never stopped. And the ones that went into scarcity and I mean, Hey, COVID was when it got first came out. I mean, it was really, really scary and it's still a scary thing, but you know, what are you going to do about it? You know, I had somebody ask me, they were like, Oh my God, in May, you're, you're out showing properties and listing houses and interacting with people every day. And I'm like, yeah, she goes, why aren't you scared? And I said, I'm more scared that my kids aren't going to go to university or I'm not going to be paying my bills. Like being successful, I tell you, like, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, I get people like, oh, you're so lucky or, you know, oh, everyone knows you. It's easy for you. I mean, I've worked harder in the last three months than I like, can put in longer hours than I have in years. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Susan just said fixed mindset versus growth mindset. That's so true. I listened to a TED talk on that uh, just last week. Carol, um, oh my God, her, her name escaped me. Uh, it, it's, and, and it was um, Dweck. Thank you. That's the one. Uh, just teaching your children from the start to have a growth mindset and, and how much more of a leg up they have if they're taught that at home instead of trying to figure it out in, in their 20s, 30s, 40s and beyond. My, um, my son had a golf scholarship and he's in school in the U S and he's home now with all of this. Um, and he came to me the one day and he, he, 
as soon as they opened up, he usually teaches golf camp. And because there's no camp this year, he was like, okay. So he called the golf course he usually works at. And he says, look, like I'll cut grass. I'll do whatever you need. Like I'm just want to get out again. And so he's been cutting grass and doing whatever they need. And so the one day he comes to me and he says, um, he's 19 at the time. He says, um, can we have a conversation? And I'm thinking conversation. <laughs> okay. This is going to be good. And we sat down and I said, what's up? And he goes, okay, so first of all, I'm the only person I know out of all my friends that's working right now. I said, okay. He goes, everybody else is collecting the two grand and they think I'm crazy and they're making fun of me and they're really giving me a hard time. And I thought, okay, I'm thinking I know where this is going, right? And he says, I worked 31 hours last week because it rained and they sent me home a couple times and it's not really all that busy yet. And I said, right. He goes, and I need to work 33 hours a week to make the same money as everyone else that's sitting at home for two grand. I said, okay. And he said, so what's your spin on that? And I said, my spin, he goes, yeah, what's your spin? And I said, what do you mean? And I'm thinking, like he, he says, I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, like, what do you think? And I said, are you asking me if you can quit your job? Because that's what I thought. He goes, oh, no, no, that's not what I'm thinking. And I said, what? He goes, I need your positivity. I said, my positivity. He goes, yeah, why should I keep doing this? I need to hear this. And I said, I will never hire anybody that sat on the couch the summer of 2020. I said, the fact that you're out there and you're working, I said, that's what I'm going to be looking for. Cause that's a mindset of abundance and not scarcity. Or, you know, it's, it's a lack of, it's a, it's a integrity even. Right. So anyway, that was, that was my advice to him. So when you talk about positivity or, yeah, mindset or whatever, yeah, it's pretty cool that he asked that. Now I'm not perfect by all means, because my other son is sitting at home on the couch collecting two grand. <laughs> <laughs> Nature versus nurture, right? <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens, right? Well, Lorraine, thank you so much. We just want to be You're conscious welcome. of every time and especially yours. If there's any other questions that you guys think of, uh, please reach out to either Janice or myself. And yeah, David's uh, note on the shift, pivot shift calls, 8 a.m., on Facebook, the Pivot Shift Facebook group. It's non-denominational. You don't have to be Keller Williams to join. It's a fantastic group. Those of us that have been on since early March. March 16th. What's that? March 16th was when that started. Yeah. I think I started March 20th. I think that was my, yeah. yeah it was, it's, been a, it's been a godsend. Yeah. Oh, Susan, you're cute. Susan, Susan says, nice to know that you're human. <laughs> <laughs> totally Near human. Myself. You ever want to hear my screw ups? So just, just reach out. Happy to share a whole book <laughs> of them. I'm sure. Yeah. All right, thanks. Forward. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.